right now on 5 on your side at 10. Tonight, this local 10-year-old named Miracle helps deliver a miracle. How she helped mom through an emergency delivery. Frozen Friday, the coldest air of the season pushing in by the end of the week. The areas that could see some snowflakes as the Arctic air surges in. But first tonight, soccer fan safety. Thousands coming to the downtown stadium with more than the first match on their minds. Make sure I didn't leave anything in the car, no wallets, no purse, no bags. Police adding patrols after another round of car and business break-ins. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. Tonight's first match at City Park comes with a lot of excitement and some concern after a recent rash of crime. Our Robert Townsend talked to fans tonight. Robert. And police say in the last 24 hours, the car break-ins popped up all around downtown. That was definitely not what soccer fans heading to the new stadium wanted to hear. Oh, I'm very excited to see the stadium. An ecstatic Alondra Terrassa and her friends were among the thousands filling the streets of downtown Wednesday night. Oh, I like coming downtown for the games and for having a fun time. And while the soccer fans were inside the stadium having a fun time, outside extra police officers were on the move patrolling downtown streets. They'll feel safer knowing the police officer are, you know, doing roundabout. We did see an officer come by, so that was good. For months now, car break ins have been a major problem citywide and downtown. No exception. Police say vandals recently broke into more cars at privately owned and business parking lots and on downtown streets. It's always on my mind. Even before she headed to the soccer match, Alondra Terrassa made sure her car was secured. Made sure I didn't leave anything in the car, no wallets, no purse, no bags, nothing on the seats, and then on my steering wheel, I put a lock on it. Extra safety tips from people. Happy to see extra officers. I'll be a bit calmer during the game knowing that police officer will be, you know, going around checking on the cars. You think it will make a difference? Uh, I'm hopeful. I'm really not confident that it will, but we'll see. Police tell me the thieves stole coins and electronics, and in one case, a gun was stolen from a car. Live downtown, Robert Townsend, five on your side. St. Louis, it's long been a soccer town. Now downtown will be a hot spot for soccer fans. And tonight's international friendly featured the City 2 team. That's the developmental squad for St. Louis SC. Brent Sullivan is live inside City Park where fans began showing up hours before the big match. Brent. That's right. I tell you what, the St. Louis City SC won't play their first official match as a major soccer league uh, expansion franchise until next year. But tonight gave the team's developmental squad an opportunity to break things in, and the fans were here. We're here to see the opening friendly game for the St. Louis City soccer team. It's a family outing for the Sheds of Chesterfield. I actually used to play on a soccer team. In fact, 10-year-old Wyatt may be the reason they're here. Because I never would have been paying attention to this kind of whole soccer stuff, and he just like kind of opened my eyes. I'm like, all right, yeah, sure, let's do it. They're joining the droves of soccer fans who are here at City Park for the very first time. We were there as the gates opened. I think it's going to be a huge opportunity for, for our business. For all of the small businesses that are coming out of the pandemic, after everything that all these restaurants have been through, this is a huge opportunity for 100% local vendors in one stadium. I'm mostly proud of, like, I feel like the St. St. Louis as a community is coming together. I think, like, seeing all, like, all the local businesses, local artists. Live music for soccer fans ahead of the big friendly. And before the match, fans got to see the St. Louis City SC's first official team jersey, also known as Kits. Fans who pre-ordered them were able to grab theirs as Adidas was on hand to offer a free inaugural 2023 season patch to be stamped on the back of that kit. Are you gonna have some fun or what? Yeah. You're gonna have a lot of fun. <laughs> Definitely. The fun meant battling the frigid temps. I put on everything I own. Because it's so cold <laughs> out yeah. here. Yeah, it's so cold out, yeah. But it's gonna be great. Absolute coldest I've ever performed in. But when it means being a part of history, it made it all worth it. Go St. Louis. <laughs> 
It's still cold out here. I just got to add that. But let me tell you this on top of all of the food trucks that were outside, some 52 local vendors were here inside of the stadium tonight, really offering a sneak peek of what's to come. Energy, enthusiasm, excitement for a new team as we prepare for 2023. Live in St. Louis tonight, Brent Solomon, five on your side. And Sports Director Frank Cusimano will have highlights of tonight's match and reaction from the team later on in sports. And we're all talking about this cold night ride for not only the soccer fans in that open air stadium, but Brenton looked pretty chilly. And that November chill continues to deliver below average temperatures. Let's go to our Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell with the weather first forecast. And you were telling us earlier we're supposed to be in the 50s right now. Yeah, the average temperature high this, af this afternoon was 55 degrees. So obviously we were nowhere there, but we didn't exactly have a hat trick weather wise today because we just had a couple of flurries. Yeah, we had the cold, we had wind chills, but no accumulating snow. So on the plus side, that's good, right? 30 degrees over at the Botanical Garden right now. They are lit up for the garden glow, getting ready to really kick off the holiday season here in the next few nights. Radar pictures, not much happening across the region. We still have some clouds, still in the upper 20s to around 30. Unfortunately, there's still a breeze, and so wind chills remain in the low 20s right now. And that's what the temperature is in Kirksville and up in Des Moines. Listen, that breeze is still out there. The below average temperatures are going to continue. In fact, this cold lasts into the weekend. There is even more cold coming our way to reinforce it as we head into late tomorrow, and that should bring us a few flurries, but it's mainly dry overall as we head towards Monday. We'll take a look towards Thanksgiving in about 10 minutes, Ann. Tonight, Collinsville police need your help finding a man accused of kidnapping a woman and sexually assaulting her. They released a sketch of the man and surveillance photos of a car they are looking for tonight. According to investigators, the victim was outside of a Starbucks in the Collinsville area when the man holding a large knife got into her car. He told her to drive to Troy, Illinois, where he assaulted her. He then drove her back to the shopping center and ran away. If you have any information, call Collinsville police. Tonight, more confusion in the Florissant community after a new third report released this week says Jana Elementary School is safe from radioactive contamination, but the community will get their chance to have their questions answered. Two other tests gave conflicting results, one from Boston Chemical showing potentially dangerous radioactivity, the other from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which said everything was within acceptable levels. This third group, this third testing group, SCI Engineering, does list the Army Corps as one of its federal clients on its website. So tomorrow night, the public can ask the Army Corps questions about these recent tests. It is from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Florissant Municipal Court Building. A funeral will be held tomorrow for a St. Louis community icon. Tonight, a visitation was held for Martin Matthews at the Matthews Dickey Boys and Girls Club. He co-founded the organization back in 1959. Matthews died last week at the age of 97. His funeral is set for tomorrow morning at 10 at Washington University's Graham Chapel. Instead of flowers, people are asked to send donations to the Martin Matthews Legacy Fund. Tonight, a very special child gets a very special honor. Brave girl. She helped her mom deliver the baby sister at home. New tonight, Laura Barczewski brings us the miracle from North St. Louis County. Laura. Mike and Ann, at just 10 years old, a little girl named Miracle called 911 when her pregnant mom was in pain. Little did she know she'd be helping bring her baby sister into the world before that call even ended. She said, call 911, and then I called, and then that's when she had the baby. While time was moving fast for 10-year-old Miracle, I was scared. It actually took about 10 minutes to help her mom, Viola Fair, deliver her baby sister, Jayla, with the help of this dispatcher. I learned pretty quick that we had a serious situation. Uh, we have a set of protocols that we follow, and she <laughs> followed all of my instructions to a T. Um, it did an amazing job, and a few minutes later, we had a, another baby girl in the house. Fair says she was so proud of her daughter Miracle, who helped her bring another miracle into their lives on October 23rd, three weeks early. It was definitely a miracle because once I had the baby and she came out, I couldn't really like grab her or pick her up or nothing. So then Miracle came and she was trying to wrap her up in a towel. She kind of rubbed her back a little bit so she 
didn't cry. So she was real helpful. I am very thankful. Shortly after delivery, paramedics from Christian Hospital took it from there. Just picked baby up first thing, wrapped her in a blanket, yelled happy birthday. It was good. We love seeing good outcomes for families and stuff like that. We do see a lot of bad things, but um, one of these special moments is the best. This is what we do it for. Miracle was given two awards for her heroic work. Um, wonderful job, so we're so proud of you. She says someday she might want to be in the medical field to continue helping people every day, but for now, she's focused on her first job, being a big sister times two. She's really cute. She doesn't cry a lot and I get to hold her a lot. Everyone involved says it was so special to be reunited with Miracle, her mom Viola, and of course baby Jayla. Tonight, because it's not very often, the first responders get to be reunited with the ones they help. Tonight, a step forward in protecting same-sex marriage. The Missouri lawmaker breaking with his party to support the Defense of Marriage Act. Holiday meal deals. This year's Thanksgiving dinner is taking more stuffing out of your wallet. Tonight, the best bargains that could even keep you out of the kitchen. The coldest temperatures we've seen in St. Louis since March 12th, on the way for Saturday morning when this cold weather pattern eases. The man convicted of killing six people and injuring a dozen others when he drove through a Wisconsin Christmas parade will spend the rest of his life in prison. Just hours ago, a judge sentenced Dur Durrell Brooks to six consecutive life terms and more than 700 additional years. The sentencing comes nearly a year since the attack. Tonight, the Uvalde School District approved a site and conceptual design for a new elementary school. It will replace Robb Elementary, where 19 students and two teachers were killed in a mass shooting in May. A community foundation is raising the money for this new school. Tonight, Republicans have gained control of the U.S. House of Representatives. They've secured the 218th seat needed to take the majority. And tonight, NBC News is projecting the GOP will end up with 221 seats. It's a slim majority, but it's a pickup of eight seats. Republicans failed to win the Senate, and today there was a fight for leadership in the party. Senator Rick Scott lost a bid to replace Mitch McConnell after brushing off blame for his party's midterm performance among moderates and independents. Who looked at us and concluded too much chaos, too much negativity, and we turned off a lot of these centrist voters. I voted for Rick Scott, as I said I was going to. I think Senator McConnell's view is, is that Trump is largely to blame, that, that Republicans have an image problem because of Trump. I've said that I don't agree with that. McConnell has yet to publicly blame Donald Trump, who announced his third presidential run last night. Tonight, some signs of bipartisanship in the Senate. Twelve Republicans joined all Democrats to back a bill to codify the right to same-sex and interracial marriage. The legislation cleared a key procedural vote, putting it on a path to full passage. Retiring Missouri Senator Roy Blunt was one of the Republicans who voted in favor. It does include provisions for religious freedom. Even the Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church, is calling this, quote, a way forward. A St. Louis-based furniture store is going out of business. Weekends only furniture and mattress is closing all of its stores, including five here in St. Louis. According to the trade journal Furniture Today, the owner is retiring. The CEO left the company in August. No word on when the stores will close. Well, Thanksgiving, hard to believe, it's one week from tomorrow, and this year the cost of your holiday dinner is surging. The Farm Bureau says on average you'll pay about $50 more this year, and that's one of the lower estimates. Michelle Lee is helping you make ends meet, looking at the cost of ordering out and taking some cues from viewers. For the first time ever, it may be cheaper to dine out than buy groceries to prepare a Thanksgiving meal. So we've been checking out different ways to save this holiday and really just take a look here. Eggs up 43%, butter up 33%, uh, flour up nearly 25%, turkey 23 and canned fruits up almost 19%. The consumer price index is basically telling us that grocery stores are getting it hit harder with inflation than restaurants. So while you may save money ordering out on a Thanksgiving meal, 
Also take note that some restaurants are also running out of turkey or only had a limited supply. For example, Eckert's had a Thanksgiving meal, but because of a limited supply, it is now touting a deal on side dishes and desserts. After all, pies are their specialty and they make 15,000 around the holidays, though the cost of pie making ingredients have also gone up. We start baking 24 hours a day when it gets close to the holiday and this crew is round the clock getting those pies ready for all of our customers. Um, we love this time of year because it's just really cool to walk into the store and you feel like you're walking into a pie cloud. <laughs> so while smells are free, we know that it is harder for shoppers, though many of them are finding ways to save. Sometimes it's simply by doing a potluck, while others are skipping out on buying items that they didn't really like anyway, but ate for tradition or adjusting their turkey dinners altogether. I just get um, deli turkey and I make turkey rolls by using stovetop stuffing. But yeah, I mean, it's not going to be anything really, really huge. You bring a dish. You bring a dish to wherever you're going to help out the host or hostess. That's the big thing. I mean, it, it don't, you know, leave it all onto them. It's just too much. Okay, so we also did a little bit of homework for you. If you think you want to eat out, we've got some great deals at the grocery stores and big box stores. Locally, Schnooks has a really great deal that caught our attention that will feed about eight people for the cost of $59.99. It's got a turkey breast dinner, stuffing, mashed potatoes, and gravy. It is one of the cheapest deals that we could find. Now, if you want to support a local restaurant, we actually found that Daly's Smokehouse for $95 can actually feed up to 10 people pre-orders though and on Friday. Now if you'd like to see other options, we've got a ton. Just text the word thanks to 314-425-5355 and we'll send you a link. And we want to congratulate Michelle. Tonight she received the Connector of the Year Award at the Asian American Chamber of Commerce of St. Louis. Michelle, of course, founded the Very Asian Foundation, which strives for representation and inclusion of Asian stories. Congratulations to Michelle, and hopefully she's going to bed soon, right? Because yes, she's got to get up in a few hours. Another chilly November night, so let's get back to Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell. All with you got to do is walk outside. You wake up really fast. Yeah, you know, those for temperatures sure. are cold. It is 30 degrees in St. Louis, and you know what? We still have some flurries flying around the metro area. Not a lot, not going to amount to anything, but it's just kind of the fact that they're there. 30 degrees, wind chills down into the lower 20s. The clearing line is still back to our west, so it's going to be a little bit before we clear out, but we should trend that way before daybreak. Winds still out of the west northwest at 13, and they've still been a bit gusty this evening. That 30 degree temperatures actually are low that we've seen so far today. The highest was only 36 and just a trace of snow today. Nothing measurable temperatures tonight. Low to mid 20s across the area. We will trend towards clearing out. Don't fret over the snow. It's not going to be anything to worry about. Now, if you were traveling up into parts of Michigan, Maybe you're thinking you're going this weekend to Buffalo. Good luck. Buffalo is looking at probably in the Buffalo area, especially south of town. There may be spots that end up with three or more feet of snow between now and Saturday. Meanwhile, there's more cold air building up in Canada. Yay us. It's headed right for the by state region, and this front could kick off some more snow showers heading into tomorrow afternoon. Once again, we're above freezing tomorrow, so even if we have snow showers, the odds of seeing anything accumulate pretty slim, but it would be right during the afternoon hours as that front's coming through the area. We're in the low 40s for highs, but then behind the front, it's the coldest air that we've seen moving into the bi-state region that settles in here for Friday and into early Saturday and into Sunday. Saturday morning, we're looking at low temperatures that'll be down into the teens. Lower 20s Friday morning, 19 on Saturday morning. That will be the first time we've had a temperature below 20 degrees since March 12th. Looks like we're in that same territory Sunday and then we'll make a turn heading into next week. The pattern shifts a little bit and it allows warmer temperatures to come our way, but also with the winds turning to the south and the warmer air coming our way, moisture starts streaming in. So as we head towards Wednesday, a lot of folks traveling for Thanksgiving on Wednesday, mostly looking at rain here. Don't think we're looking at big wintertime weather scenarios because it's warm enough, but you will encounter some rain, especially Wednesday night and into Thanksgiving day as we look at this system coming across the bi-state region. So just keep that in mind for your planning purposes. Again, not looking at big time winter weather, but some rain could slow you down on your travels for later Wednesday and into Thursday. 43 tomorrow, 30 on Friday, and that's it. 
highs in the 30s with lows in the teens this weekend. But next week is looking more like November should look and it'll feel like Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving. We'll just have some rain. All right, Scott, thanks. Frank is here with sports. Mike, the Blues are on fire and one of the goals had one of the moms in tears. We have soccer too. And who is the most intimidating actor John Hamm has ever been around? Stick around. This is serious business. A week ago, you were wondering if the Blues were turning into the Pirates. Then you beat the Sharks at home. You win at Vegas and again at Colorado. And tonight at Chicago, as Frank Costanza would say, they are back, baby. Late first period, scoreless game, win in doubt. Get Kelly Rosen the puck. His second in four games, the note led one to nothing. Second period, this is why Jordan Cairo got the big contract. He has mad skills. His sixth of the year, and the moms on the trip are loving it. About three minutes later, you know who played great? Ryan O'Reilly. This is a shorthanded rebound goal, 3-1 note. Moms having more fun. Then a little later, Tyler Pitlick will score his first as a blue. The note led it four to two after two. Really good moment here. Ivan Barbashev, breakaway goal. This is better. Mrs. Barbashev in tears. Blues win 5-2. That's four in a row. Well, it's amazing what 450 million bucks will buy you nowadays. It bought St. Louis the stadium, City Park. And tonight, it was the beginning of a whole new soccer era in a soccer crazy city. The lines were long. The fans came ready to cheer soccer in St. Louis. Leverkusen struck first, some nifty offensive work. It's Callum Hudson, Annoy, who gets it past Roman Berkey for the first goal ever at City Park. Later on, the German team would make it two to nothing. This time, it's Adam Lozek who scores. And in the first match ever, Bayer Leverkusen beats City two by the score of three to nothing. But what about the event itself? Um, for us as players, you know, it's a special moment because we, we are the first group that's um, been able to use the stadium and as a group of players, you know, that's that's a special occasion for us. Um, just being able to step into a place that we're going to call home for uh, for years to come. You knew that SLU basketball was going to be special when Dr. Shavitz is showing up for games in November. He was there last night. SLU is tested by Memphis and this weekend they'll be tested twice. It's Maryland Saturday and either Miami or Providence on Sunday. You know, when Coach Travis Ford gushes about Yori Collins, some think it's just a coach promoting his player. Well, Travis is actually right. Yori is incredible. He was again last night. He had nine assists, 22 points. He was the best player on the floor, and everybody who watched that game believes the exact same thing. I truly believe Yuri Collins is the best point guard in America because we all know he can get assists. That's what he's known for. But I keep saying, some nights he's going to have to go out and score. We're going to need his scoring. Um, and he does a pretty good job of understanding when he needs to do that. And he controlled the game tonight for us. And the big thing for him, what makes it even that more special is on his end and his total team effort, that he had to guard their best player. The Battle Hawks with their first pick and the second overall pick in the XFL draft grabbed Marcel Aitman. He's a wide receiver who played with the Raiders. They also drafted Ricky Prohl's son, Austin. Sunday night, you don't want to miss it. John Hamm on Sports Plus on life, the Blues, the Cardinals, and his career. What actor were you most intimidated meeting for the very first time? Cruz, I think, pretty much hands down. He's he's just too big. His his shadow is too big over not only my career but people my age. You know, he's just been the he's been the go to guy for forever. And uh, and it, again, I say I say that with all with all due respect and, and also with the caveat that he's also, once you get to know him, the nicest guy you'll ever want to meet. And I got to tell you, his knowledge of the Blues, I thought I was listening to Chris Kerber when he was breaking down <laughs> wow. this Blues team. He has thoughts on Stan Kroenke. He has thoughts on the Cardinals and what they should do in the offseason. And we talk a lot about his career. Do you and, Stan, he, you and John agree on Stan, I'm guessing? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, we do. Another reason to love John Hamm. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't use the soundbite. Oh, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Not a big fan of Stan Kroenke. All right, Frank, thanks very much. Sam's and Costco taking a stand at the snack stand, the real winner of this hot dog war. 
Tonight, two big warehouse clubs have declared a hot dog war. Sam's has lowered the price of its hot dog and soda combo to $1.38. It's in response to Costco, which said it would keep its famous combo at $1.50 forever. Sam's is also has uh, frozen prices on Thanksgiving staples since last year. Tomorrow night, the Anheuser-Busch Brewery will flip the switch on the holidays. Brewery lights will run Thursday through Sundays. New this year, an expanded light show along Pestalozzi Street, a 50-foot tall dancing tree, and a nightly parade featuring the world famous Budweiser Clydesdales. Tickets cost about 11 bucks a piece. There are also 15 nights where you can drive through for free. For more information on brewery lights and other holiday displays across the bi-state, just text the word lights to 314-425-5355. And there you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Start your day with Today in St. Louis beginning at 4 a.m.